Holy Shimmol, all right. It's a cross. That's a cross. From the more than 200 year old search for an elusive treasure that nobody seemed to be certain about or who it belongs to. The accidental discovery of the treasure by a pair of brothers who dedicated their lives to finding it, here's how Rick and Marty Lagina accidentally found the hidden treasure of Oak Island. For more than 200 years now, this little island, coasting off the southern shores of Nova Scotia, known as Oak Island, has seen the dreams of many men dashed to pieces. Yes. The island is captivating to all those who see it, thanks to the sandy beaches on the island, the breathtaking views of the ocean from said beaches, and the plush and captivating landscape that can be found there. However, what is truly fascinating about the island is what has drawn so many people there for many centuries, the desperate search for treasure that has been rumored to be hidden on the island for many years. How did this start? How did so many people risk their lives for so long just because of the prospect of finding treasure on Oak Island? Imagine the likes of Long John Silver from Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island running around on the unforgiving island with his army of bandits and pirates as they search for where X marked the spot. Now, multiply this by 100 and be stunned that you might be coming up short. What's even more troubling about this 200 plus year search for treasure on Oak Island is perhaps what is running through most of our viewers minds as they contemplate on the prospect of finding this treasure on Oak Island. There's the famous Oak Island legend. Six people have died. Then a seventh has to die. This troubling thing is that despite the fact that these men have risked their lives crossing the seven seas from all corners of the world, nobody has emerged with this treasure, even till this day. Well, that may all be changing soon, because Rick and Marty Lagina, the leaders of the current team that's risking it all just to come away with this elusive treasure after so long, may have some news for us. That said, we must take a look back and appreciate how this treasure hunting frenzy first began. The truth of the matter is that Oak Island may have always been a place for stowaways looking for a place to stash their loot while hiding from the European military officers wanting to crush the reign of piracy rampant during the golden age of piracy between the mid 1600s and the early to mid 1730s as such. It makes sense that following the signing of the Treaty of Utrecht which signified the end of the War of Spanish Succession. The focus of all the forces of those involved in this war shifted on the plague that was piracy at the time. It was likely that these pirates may have hidden their treasures in a place like Coke Island, especially as it was among the small islands in the Americas and the Caribbeans where these pirates were known to travel to and from during their reign of terror. For example, it is believed that it may have been the likes of Edward Teach, who was more popularly known as Blackbeard, may have hidden his massive loot on Oak Island when the authorities were doing their best to capture him and put that noose around his neck. The same can be said for good old Captain Kidd, who is another favorite candidate as the owner of the rumored massive loot that is believed to be hidden somewhere on the captivating place that is Oak Island just found an important clue connecting the Oak Island mystery to the 17th century pirate Captain William Kidd. As interesting as such tales may be, especially to those who love a tale filled with adventurous pirates that plundered boats and ships that had the misfortune of traveling in the open seas they'd find that this is just one of the rumors surrounding the mysterious treasure hunting spot that is Oak Island. You see, there are too many players involved in this game, and till this day, nobody can actually put a finger on who owns the mysterious treasure of Oak Island. There are those who believe that the loot belonged to Marie Antoinette, the fallen French queen that lost her husband, King Louis XVI, her children, and her generational wealth to the French Revolution. It is believed that while she was staring at the destruction of her royal family, along with the social structure that had enriched many for generations, she managed to smuggle a good portion of her massive wealth to the mysterious treasure spot that is Oak Island. Otis believed that it was done in the hope that she and her family may be able to use the money to start a new life away from the turbulent French Revolution. Alas, 
the unfortunate queen and her supporters would find that the guillotine begged to differ. As compelling as such a sad tale seemed to be, especially to those that may be captivated with the glamorous figure that was Queen Marie Antoinette, they may find that it may be more believable to think that this treasure may have belonged to the great bard Sir William Shakespeare. And then there's some people who credibly believe that it's the lost manuscripts of Shakespeare. These people believed that while the treasure may be made up of the wealth of one of the most famous English playwrights in history, if not the greatest of all time, they also believed that the treasure could also be in the form of some of his unpublished work. Imagine finding the treasure and being able to help the legendary playwright publish works that may be able to surpass classics such as Romeo and Juliet, The Merchant of Venice or Macbeth. Interesting, however, this isn't as interesting as the fact that some of these people believe that these works weren't penned by the famous Englishman but by one of his other famous compatriots, the statesman, soldier, writer, and explorer. That was Sir Walter Raleigh, one of the most notable Englishmen of the Elizabethan era. There are some who believe that he was the one who really penned the works accredited to one of the leading members of the colonization of North America. When it is put into that context, it does make sense that it may be Sir Walter Orley who was able to find Oak Island so that he could bury his treasures and his unpublished work during his travels to North America. One would think that this was the limit to the controversy concerning the elusive treasure and its source, but the fallen queen and the famous playwright were just the tip of the iceberg when it came to the mystery of who truly owned the hidden treasure of Oak Island. This is because there were those who believed that the treasure didn't belong to one individual, but rather many, or perhaps better put, there are those who are certain that this treasure may have belonged to the Knights Templar, the Christian military organization that protected the rights of Christians, making their pilgrimage to Jerusalem. During the medieval times, certain people say that it's Knights Templar treasure, apparently. During their 200 plus years of prominence, they were able to amass a fortune that could rival most military organizations. We can all guess where they may have decided to store some of that massive fortune. Some of us may be scratching our heads at this news right now, especially when we consider our history lessons which tell us that the Americas were discovered by the likes of Christopher Columbus back in 1492. If it is true that the Knights Templar may have stored their wealth and fortune on Oak Island, that means that they may have predated the Italian explorer and his crew by at least a century or two. Can you imagine that? The history books will have to be rewritten. That's for sure. When one considers that several relics and artifacts, such as Knights Templar coins, weapons, and even some suspected cadavers that were attributed to this ancient Christian military organization, have been found littered all over this fascinating island, you'd find that it may be time to consider a change in the narrative of history. The Knights Templar probably wasn't even the only group that may have predated the likes of Christopher Columbus in the Americas. The discovery of ancient Roman swords on Oak Island has also made historians speculate about whether or not the ancient Romans decided to spread their empire to the Americas at some point in time. Alas, all this is left to speculation, as the world tries to place a finger on exactly who left this treasure on Oak Island, as nobody has ever come close to discovering the hidden treasure of Oak Island at this point in time. We may just have to wait and see until it's discovered before we can finally tell who the treasure truly belonged to. It was probably because of all these rumors of long lost treasures on the island that Daniel McGuinness a young man, who was heading out to his farm on Oak Island, decided that this strange circular impression on the ground may be a point of interest. After first discovering the money pit, Daniel McGuinness is believed to have settled with his family on Oak Island in the early 1800s, while he continued to search for the treasure. Could he have come across this island's legendary treasure? Well, such a hard-working young man wasn't going to sit down and speculate on the possibilities. Instead, he recruited a bunch of his buddies so that he could begin work on what would eventually be known as the original money pit. When you say McGuinness Foundation, 
Are you talking? One of the finders, one of the three young boys, who originally found the money pit, together with these friends. Daniel McGuinness dug as deep into the ground as the times could possibly permit, hoping and praying that they would be the one to unearth the island's legendary treasure. With every ten feet into the ground, they found several items such as oak logs and coconut fibers. They find more platforms every ten feet, and they find more odd stuff, a bit of chain, all kinds of wood that shouldn't be there. Items that encouraged them to believe that this was definitely a man-made hole. Unfortunately for the lads, they'd find that the only item that they could show as the fruit of their labor was a strange stone that was marked with cryptic messages on top of it, down about ninety feet they find a stone that's inscribed with strange engravings. It is speculated that the team was forced to bring their excavation exercises to an end, either because they'd find that technology was inadequate to help them with the challenges before them, or they'd find that they were unable to combat some of the many booby traps they found as they continued with their work down the original money pit. Finally, someone else comes in, and they find that the shaft it was actually booby trap, that there's a flood tunnel to the ocean, and all of a sudden, the water floods it. Indeed, this would prove to be one of the many hindrances that would bring an end to the treasure hunting expedition on Oak Island that many had set out for over the centuries. Some of the more notable explorers that found their way to Oak Island during this 200 plus year treasure hunt on Oak Island was the Truro Company who thought that their pickaxes and shovels would be more than enough to dig any hole that they'd need to dig when they got to Oak Island. Unfortunately, they'd find that this didn't help them with the constant flooding that occurred when they got too deep into the ground on Oak Island. We even have some famous visitors, such as Franklin D. Roosevelt, the 32nd President of the United States of America, mining engineers, business people, President Franklin Roosevelt was involved. However, his visits to Oak Island most probably predated his time in the office as the ruler of the most powerful country in the world, as he must have staked his fortune in the treasures of Oak Island. Back when he was a law school student, he and his buddies would fail, just like the efforts of the likes of John Wayne, who also had a keen interest in the treasure hunting adventures offered by Oak Island. Alas, Despite the power and fame both parties may have acquired during their lifetimes, they, just like the many others that decided to take on the challenge of Oak Island, would find that it was all for nothing, as they never discovered this elusive treasure. That's why the treasure hunt of Oak Island seemed to persist even till this day. Maybe that's why it lit a fire in the likes of Rick and Marty Lagina, the brothers who have decided to take on the challenge of Oak Island in this generation. This desire to find this treasure, wasn't born out of nothing. Turns out the brothers, especially Rick, the dreamer of the bear, seemed to have treasure hunting in their blood. The first hint of this treasure hunting spirit, appeared in the boys in an eerily similar manner, in which Daniel McGuinness sparked the 200 plus year treasure hunting frenzy. The preteen Rick Lagina is said to have shown the first sign of his love for treasure hunting, when he came across a boulder, eager to learn if there was any treasure within this strange boulder. Rick recruited baby bro Marty and some of his friends, so that they may dig into the boulder. While this was done with good spirits, the boys would find that their efforts would be in vain, as they came away with nothing to show. However, their treasure hunting spirit was never killed by the failure. Instead, one would find that a reader's digest that told Rick of the mysterious legend of Oak Island and the treasure that's rumored to be hidden on it served to show the little boy what his calling will be. When I was 11 years old, they read the story of Oak Island and I was hooked. Thanks to this, the brothers spent a good chunk of their lives working and earning the money they'd need to set off on this mission. Following careers as postal officers and leading professionals in the legal and energy sectors, the pair set out to purchase 50% of the island so that they could get to work fulfilling their dreams and the dreams of many that dared to find their way to Oak Island. This initially proved to be something of a thankless job because they'd find why it took their predecessors so long to succeed on Oak Island. However, 
their constant and relentless work on the island captured the hearts of many, and before long, the History Channel and the AE Network decided to televise their efforts to the world with the Curse of Oak Island TV show. There, we watched as the dedicated brothers and their tireless team of historians, scientists, and excavators took on the challenge of Oak Island. We've watched them battle with several booby traps, such as the constant flooding of the holes they dug up, and we've watched them make mind-boggling discoveries, such as the finding of a network of elaborate tunnels that made us wonder how these people of the past were able to build such a complex network of tunnels without the use of modern-day equipment or techniques. As interesting as these discoveries may have been, they were nowhere as exciting as the prospect of coming across this treasure that has eluded so many for so long. Maybe that's why the world has been going dizzy with the prospect of finally discovering this missing treasure. To be honest, this must have come as a surprise to the team, as they just seem to be carrying on with their everyday work on the island. Tractors, excavators, bulldozers, and all other sort of high-tech heavy equipment were being used to plow their way through the island, as they normally did through important areas such as the areas suspected to be the original money pit, or other equally important areas such as Lot 5, where many important discoveries or ancient relics and artifacts had been found or the garden shaft where the team was helping to come across a vault or a chamber where all these treasures were rumored to be hidden. Again, it seemed to be just like any other day, that is until some of these workers came across something similar to what Daniel McGuinness and Rick Lagina found when they began their treasure hunting journey, a circular impression in the ground. Upon investigation of this strange circular impression, the diggers were shocked yet excited about what they were able to unearth. Some pots filled with ancient trinkets made of gold, silver, and other precious metals. Could this truly be the elusive treasure of Oak Island? You could tell that the guys were struggling to contain themselves. After all, it must be hard to believe that you may have actually fulfilled your dreams in any field, yet alone one as difficult as this. As such, as the team extracted these trinkets from their source in the ground, they also decided that the best thing to do at this point was to also start searching for more signs of treasure in the area. Q in the trusty metal detectors that have helped them come across so many artifacts in the past. They struggled to contain themselves when this resulted in the metal detector going off. When they came to a particular spot close to where they found all those trinkets not too long ago, what were they going to unearth this time? Well, the answer came soon, thanks to their trusty excavator, which tore into the soil in a desperate bid to find something hiding within the soil. After some time spent digging with the excavator, some shovels and some pickaxes, the team found that they were at the opening of some sort of chamber, which seemed to be filled with clay pots that contained similar trinkets to the ones that they had found earlier. Oh my god! This may actually be it. This may actually be the end of the 229-year search for the elusive treasure of Oak Island. And thanks to the likes of the AE Network, we, the adoring viewers at home, may actually be able to witness such a crucial moment in history. Soon, the team got to work by removing these clay pots, so that they could see what else they had found. As fascinating as the discovery of items, such as cups, plates, and trays made of gold and silver, they definitely weren't ready for the discovery of a massive amount of silver coins within this chamber. It was almost like a dream. How were they the one that were able to find this, when it seemed to be hiding right underneath everybody's nose? Maybe the metal detectors were the difference, but come on. For more than 200 years, this has to be some sort of miracle though. What if they had missed their initial discovery? who knows. It could have meant that the treasure of Oak Island may have been hidden for another 100 years or even more. Such is the tentative nature of treasure hunting, especially when it comes to such a mysterious place as Oak Island. Be that as it may, 
The team can now focus on extracting this hall, so that they can clean and analyze it, before declaring to the world, that they are the ones who had succeeded, where many others had failed. When it came to hunting, for the elusive treasure of Oak Island, there were some who even believed, that there was a curse that was going to prevent anybody, from discovering this treasure, until seven people lost their lives, searching for the elusive treasure, of the mysterious island. There's the famous Oak Island legend. Legend. Six people have died, then a seventh has to die. So far it was believed that six had died over the centuries. So maybe the guys need to perform a roll call to see if one of their troops is missing. Either way, this isn't a matter of pressing concern. At least not for now. What we do know is that it seems like the Lagina brothers have fulfilled their dreams of becoming the ones to find the treasure of Oak Island. Sure. They will need to perform some analysis of their find, but rest assured, it seems as if the mystery of Oak Island may truly be over. Let's see what the future holds. For those who accidentally may have found the elusive treasure of Oak Island from the more than 200 year old search for an elusive treasure that nobody seemed to be certain about who it belongs to. The accidental discovery of the treasure by a pair of brothers who dedicated their lives to finding it Here's how Rick and Marty Lagina accidentally found the hidden treasure of Oak Island.